Right, we've got a question here from David. David asks, if I were to use array formulas to multiply one column with another, would it still work if I added another column of information? I'm assuming though that it would be impossible to delete a row. So thank you, David, for that question. So let's see how we can do that. Well, first of all, array formulas. So if I have this multiplied by this and use that as array formula and then put a sum around it, some sort of aggregation, because we want a single figure at the end rather than an array, and then press Control, Shift and Enter. That gets me the total of 4 times 6 plus 6 times 9 plus 8 times 12. So it's B3 times C3, B4 times C4, and so forth all the way down. Now, can you insert an extra row? Yes, you can. If I click on row 13 and copy that down to row 14, for instance, there's an extra row. Now, you can see that these formulas have not necessarily updated. That is still on the old 3 to 13, C3 to 13. And similarly, this array formula hasn't updated as well. So if we add this extra, then what we need to do is change the rows. So we can just do that, just like that. So now it reads B3 to B14 times C3 to C14. Press Control Shift Enter. And you can see that the formula updates, but it didn't update automatically. So if you did want to do that, you would have to insert extra rows and then change your function. Now, as for deleting rows, then you can delete rows which are mentioned by an array formula. So let's delete row 9, for instance, and you can see that it still works. The length, the rows that we've got here have now changed. So that is one way of answering your question about array formulas. Let's just turn back to the question. So if I were to use array formulas to multiply one column with another column, there is a second way of reading that question. Now, what we've done at the moment is used one formula here to aggregate, to do all the multiplication and to get a single answer. But we could use an array formula that gives me a array back. So instead of using a sum, not using a sum, and having an output that is an array. So to show you what I mean, equals b3 times c3, equals b4 times c4, and so forth. Now, instead of having to write each of those separately, going all the way down to 13, I could select the entire range and go equals b3 colon b13, multiply by c3 colon c13, and then press Control shift enter And that is another array. It's not really, it is an array formula, but it's an array formula that outputs an array rather than an array formula that outputs a single value. So then, if you wanted to add an additional row, so let's copy that and put that down and call that number 14, you can see that the array formula now is dreadful. It's not the same because what it's done is it's taken this entire range and then copied it down as far as it will go. So it's taking this entire range. So what we would have to do then, if we wanted the one consistent formula, is to take this array, and in fact, I'll just um, put different values in here, just so you can see that the, at the moment we're getting several values, which are 864. So if I multiply that several times, there we go. And change that to 14. So at the moment, this is an inconsistent uh, formula because that is one array, and then this is the start of another array, albeit that it is just the first value. So if I wanted to extend this downwards, then I would have to highlight all of that, change the references, and then press Control Shift Enter. And now you can see it's all one big array again. So you can see the extent of the array. Now, this may be more what you meant because you also said, I'm assuming it would be impossible to delete a row. And that is quite correct. If you have an array formula that outputs an array, as opposed to an array formula that outputs a single value, then you cannot delete a single row because you're deleting part of an array. Similarly, 
if you had an array going over more than one column, so let's say I put this as more than one column, there we are, so now we've got a array that does that, then I try and insert a column, I can't, and if I was to delete a column, I can't either. So this is not so much as a weakness, it's a strength. It means that if I create an array formula, then I made it a bit the spreadsheet a bit more tamper proof. I can't have prime people just deleting values just wherever they want. So they can't delete just part of an array. They have to go into it and delete the entirety. And a quick way of doing that is just um, going into the value. And as you can see, it's pretty difficult to just do that. So quickest way, copy and paste some alternate value. So I've, I've now got a two column and a 12 row of formula. So if I copy that as blank values, that would do it. So yes, you can add additional rows, but bear in mind, you may get inconsistent array formulas if you are outputting as an array and you won't necessarily get an up to date formula if you are outputting as an aggregate as a single value. If you insert a row in the middle, then yeah, that would um, expand to match. It would include the new empty rows. But if you are having an array formula which outputs as an array, then if you wanted to add additional rows to the end, you would have to update the array. And yes, you can't delete rows either from the beginning, the middle or the end. So thank you very much for this question and I hope you found the answer useful. Now this comes from my level 8 section 4 of my advanced Excel course. I'll be inserting it as a bonus but you can see how to create array formulas and amalgamate the result, how to output it as a range using min-max, using transpose, limitations and a practice activity to make sure that you are learning. So if you do want to do this course, it's 10 hours long, it takes from, goes from the intermediate to the expert level, then please have a look at the link near this video and also have a look at it for a special offer. So thank you very much and I'll see you on the next video.